hey, what's up, Ollie? Hey, John, how are you, mate? Yeah, good to see you, man. How's your lockdown going? Ah, uh, welcome to the, the brave new world. This is uh, this is our reality for the next um, foreseeable future. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's so, interesting. This is a way that I, a lot of people are catching up, you know, um, because we can't physically hang out. Uh, you're seeing a lot of people do these um, you know, virtual conference type things. And it's, um, I wouldn't mind having shares in Zoom right now. It's one of the few <laughs> things you put shares in. Yeah. And the thing is, because we were um, just before all this started, we were like trying to catch up for a beer because we had a, a pretty good end of the 2019. Like you, um, your games are doing quite well and I had reached some of my own kind of mini milestones and releasing um, some couple of Unity assets and whatever. Um, but yeah, so we never got around to having that um, beer at the pub. So now we're here. We By are. the time we got around to it, the sort of the pandemic had hit and that yeah. was, um, you know. But, but this is interesting because, um, you know, I, 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 could, I could maybe get used to this. But and as we discussed, um, or at least on my end, to make it somewhat official, I've got myself some goat <sighs> lager. Oh man, that is pretty tempting. I, I I think I'll be joining you as soon as I finish this coffee. That's right. Now that I heard well, that that crisp kind of the crispness of the well, the I'll, I'll, I have another one that's um will be waiting. <laughs> you could <can> virtually <laughs> pass it through. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. I mean, we um we always actually said we'd do something like this as well. We um I remember about maybe two years ago we we intended we actually recorded a podcast together. Um, because we were just starting up our game studios really and, and we recorded a whole podcast, but the recording quality ended up sucking. So two years later, finally, we're putting something together, which um, both your audience and my yeah, audience yeah. hopefully will enjoy. Well, that, that was kind of on me, that first a bungle, because um, I was respond. Yeah, so we, we tried to make some podcast. And I guess this is kind of a new attempt at that, but with a bit more sophistication. Um, yeah, because back with then, the visual yeah. component, it's good. And I, I had I had not too much experience, and I hadn't started my YouTube channel yet. And um, yeah, at this point, I've got and a I few think, videos under my belt, so it's it's easier to go through the motions on these kind of. Yeah, you got an, an audience now that would be hopefully, and it will enjoy this. You know, we're both we're both game developers. We're both doing this a long time, so we've got a lot to talk about. You know, and what we're trying to do in this video essentially is almost kind of replicate. Um, the chats that we have at lunchtime, you know what I mean? Because we work together a couple of days a week and um, we we'll often just go out and have a, um, you know, have lunch together, just talk games. And it's really free flowing and kind of um, I often think, man, we should have recorded that, mm. you know, so this is that att an attempt at that. Yeah. So I, I do have a question for you in, um, in the midst of all this um, chaos. Um, how has how has this situation affected um, Steam game sales? Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, my stats have been a bit skewed because around early February, um, the sales have been kind of creeping up, creeping up um, to a pretty sort of fairly comfortable level. But then um, Charlie Pe Penguins, Penguins Critical, I think it's Critical. Oh, right. He's got yeah, like a few yeah. different monikers. Critical is probably the name that everyone knows him by. Did a, is a big YouTuber, with four and a half million subs. He did a series of videos on Swords of Sandals, just, you know, taking a piss because he's like a pretty sarcastic Dude, guy. Man, when that guy made that video, I was like, holy shit. I, got, I wasn't sure you, you understood the implications of, of I, I didn't making. because I'm old and I have no <laughs> idea who, you know, he was. I'd seen him. I'd seen him before, but I didn't realize oh, I was that guy. But with off the back of that, I had this couple of weeks of just crazy game sales, you know, like not, Minecraft numbers or anything like that, but kind of thing that if that was every month, I would easily be able to just do this full time, quit my job, mm. basically. That's it. Um, since then, it's tailed off. Um, it's the week, about a week ago, when it, when the kind of you know proverbial started to hit the fan around the world, I noticed a sharp decline in sales. So like you know thirty percent easily of sales down, mm. like. In, in about a day and it was about a day of sort of you know the us announcing some things and i reckon there's a lot of people sort of like panicking it'll be made redundant all within right. a few days and so however that's kind of starting to go back up again so mm. uh it's still a wait and see for me and i think the general um vibe out there is that people are at home and playing games and buying games which right. is interesting so but, whether they're buying our games yeah not well, buying I mean, spider like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game it's a good game yeah. 
Uh, yeah, people <laughs> should check that out, by the way. This guy made a, a, a really cool um, a retro style 80s platformer called Spartacus. And this thing was, um, it was, it was pretty mean to players and it was pretty hard. Uh, but in mm. terms of like actual uh, core gameplay, it was really solid, man, and really. I actually want to show you something on that in a little bit um, because I've actually I've been working on the iOS version of it, and um, it's been released, but the controls suck, and it's really hard to um, can, to to move move around. So mm. I want to show you what I'm kind of working on uh, in Unity. So I'll flip over to that with we'll do yeah, a share yeah, screen. Cool. I mean, I can do it. I'll do it right now, actually, well, if you want to have a look. I'm, I'm actually uh, noticing, I'm, I don't know if it's, um, I'm getting like some latency on your video feed. Um, ah, ho- interesting. Ho- hopefully, I, I don't know if it's because I've got so many things running right now. I have OBS recording this. I think I've got Unity doing something in the background and, and this, but you, the audio is clear, but um, every now and then it's getting... Um, doing it's some buffering. F- and- yeah, something like that. I can't say I noticed it before. But, um, yeah, it's probably because the, when you think recording the stuff is going to have a big impact. Yeah, right. Always, um, so um, hopefully, if you share something, it's not going to. But you know, just yeah. just back to the topic of of the sales because um, you know, there's two ways I thought this could go, um, and I think we need more time to let the dust settle just to see the um, longer term implications, depending on how far this goes. But I mean, ov- obviously, more people at home, more people playing games because people need entertainment. Sure. Um, that that's the immediate kind of implications, and and this is like a you know essentially like you've seen a holiday season, or um, but as economies start to um, crash and dwindle, um, people will inevitably have less money to spend, and will be mm-hmm. um, a bit more careful with their spending, and I mean there's various forms of entertainment out there, and and games are not necessarily the um, most least expensive, you know, in terms of. Oh, you can get a ping pong ball and a bat and just bounce that shit all day. I'm not sure. And here's the other a, thing. Hmm. I was thinking about this as well. It's, you made a good point. Um, people are going to be tightening the belts. They might not have the extra cash to spend. And also, you must be the same as me and, and just about everyone else, you know, how many games do you have in a back catalog just waiting to play? Hmm. You know, I've got dozens and dozens of games on Steam that I haven't played that I've been meaning to play. I've got a bunch of games on the Switch. I've got the PlayStation 4 still with, you know, Bloodborne and all these other games that I've been meaning to go back oh, to. Oh, man. Dude, Chances are, well, you just go, I just, I'll just play these other games. It's a, this this um, console game hoarding is a bit of a problem, eh? And it's yeah. not till the next console. And I, I was telling myself, get rid of the PlayStation 4. Get rid of it. Get rid of the games or you're going to end up in a situation. now. Yeah, because the PlayStation 5 has officially been um, announced, like... Um, officially by sony they've i think they've unveiled the official um specs and photos and it's very powerful and it's very cool it's actually on par with like a pc this is the first time ever that that the playstation has been on par with pc gaming which is a bit of a interesting um, dichotomy right because always it was like oh well you know pc master race and it will always be that to some degree because a a console will never i mean look there's an overlap point and Mm -hmm. right now the PlayStation um, 5 might be on that, but, you know, give it six months and the PC um, uh, statistics uh, technolo- um, tech specs will just boost through the roof anyway with the next um, uh, level of... Yeah, because right now the PC is sort of... It's slowed down as well, like the actual growth in right. terms of, like, the, the new Moore's NVIDIA cards. And, and all this stuff is slowing down as well, the double yeah. of... Um, That's the, yeah, I was going to say that that law is, you know, it's sort of... There's a sort of a finite amount of more power you can get out of these things um the playstation 5 is i'm really looking forward to, i don't i don't feel like that's going to be affected by this pandemic i'm sure production will slow but <clears> if that does come out um it's something i would like to get because i was going to go back um when the witcher tv show was on it got me wanting to play the witcher 3 again because i Toss quite enjoyed that coin to your witcher <laughs> oh valley of plenty great oh, great oh. song <laughs> it's a great show. It's a lot of fun. And it got me wanting to play the game again. Um, but I fired it up on the PlayStation 4 and the load times are just ridiculous. Right. <laughs> so I played it for about, about 20 minutes. I'm like, man, I can't do this. I had to stop because the load time stuff. So. You know, it's, it's just like going back to um, the Xbox 360 or something. And, you know, and, and, and that's the thing, right? Um, because after about sometime mid last year, I was trying to get rid of my Xbox 360. And I still had this thing with over 120 games like hard copy games man and i was like this cost thousands of oh, dollars 
all these games because a lot of these games I bought at full price. Not not it's crazy. I mean, not not most of them, but some of the good ones. You know, are f- all the Far Cries and stuff. I even pre-ordered some of them, and and then I couldn't. I put it on like Gumtree, which is like our Craigslist thing or whatever. But um, I couldn't even get one hundred fifty dollars for it for the whole lot. The guy they were trying to Great. bargain. They were trying to bargain me down to like ninety dollars, and I was thinking at this point, I might as well just keep it because at some point I might yeah. want to play it. But so well, I, I, you I, might, I, yeah, you well, might as well like, just sort of like donate it to the library or something. You right, know I mean? right. I mean, long story short, I gave it to like um uh, an, an, uh my my wife's uh, brother for free. So he oh, sweet, he's, yeah. not, he's not really into gaming, oh, and, and to him he, he 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 played. He was playing um Red Dead Redemption, like the really old one, for the first oh, time, for the first time. And he's like, this looks so real, you know, because he's not he's not a like a, he's not a gamer like we are. And to mm. us, it's like last gen, but to him, it was like photorealistic because he the last That's game he would have played was um King's Quest Pac-Man. or something. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, but, right. you know, that was nice. It was, it was, but it was a reminder to to uh, that these, even Xbox three hundred and sixty, is still very uh, cool technology. You know, and mm. it's all about context, and the right person can still really enjoy it. But you know, that's right. I've got a couple of games for sale on eBay that have been just for sale for months, and no one will buy them. But it's already to that point where you know PlayStation four games that I just never played. People aren't interested. Even just ten bucks. So it's right, it's right. like unless you sell it now, it's all over. Yeah, that's yeah. You, you just, it's interesting just with assume these, it's all over at this point. Assume it's all, I mean, speaking of it, it's, it's kind of like we always joke, like you stockpile these games off oh, for when the apocalypse comes and so on. And, you know, it's very dramatic to call that an apocalypse, but this is, a, you know, one of the most sort of serious events of our lifetime. If not like stockpiling games for now, like when are you, and if you're not going to play them now, you're never going to play them, right? Right. Yeah, that's but, a good point. And, and you know, um, yeah, and also the is the motivation there to play games right now? That's the other thing. For me, not. Oh, no, same. Um, like I don't know. I mean, have you been having any kind of anxiety or anything during this? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of and, and, and it, it's good days and bad days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it sort of depends on you can you can really overdose on the news and and um, kind of let the sort of hysteria wash over you. And the days that you do that, that it can really hit you hard. And then other days, you kind of go all. Oh, but consider what I have right now, statistically, if I'm doing the right things, probably fine. But you start getting worried for your, your friends and family and extended family and, you know, not being able to see them. Yeah. So there's definitely, I think yeah, there's man. a general yeah. kind of panic, like, right? Like I went to my, I went to my mum's house um, just the other day to um, bring her some stuff just so she can be more comfortable. And mm. I'm just trying to get her like the face masks and, and the things she needs so she doesn't have to worry about it because... I mean, we have the internet. We can get on like Reddit and find a lot, a lot of the um, non-mainstream um, uh, kind of information that might be a bit more credible. You know, you can't trust this mm-hmm. Trump's like it's all going to be over in a week. You know, it's yeah, I don't Easter, know. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, Easter's an important day. It's going to be over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know, dude. The guy's I, never been to church I, in his life virus, either. You the know? virus doesn't give a shit about your holidays. You know, it's yeah. Like, uh. So, you know, but yeah, but, 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 you know, the sad thing is I, I went to my mom's house and, and I could see her instinct was like, she wanted to like, you know, give me a hug and stuff. And I was like, no, like, you know, you can't, can't yeah. go near me. And this is weird because this situation, it kind of invokes um, the need for empathy and people to be together, you know, but mm. like, like in wartime, you know, people would have been huddling in a bunker, but it's so weird because yeah, this is, this is an antisocial um situation i don't know what to call it it's like war or crazy so you know you, you can't even hang out with people to can, can, can console yourself and in that light what you're asking about you know do you feel like playing games at this time and so on my kind of uh inclination whenever things are kind of down and and out like and when i you know when we used to work together and it all went bad for me and i lost my job and everything um i had a few days of just kind of like being curled up in a ball and not knowing what to do but then I went straight into making games because, like, man, I've got to make money now. I've got to make money. I've got to kind of lock down some stability rather than just going, I'm just going to play games for a month. And that feeling again over this week was be like, even though I've struggled with the actual, it's very hard to be con- to concentrate on making games, but my motivation is to, I'd rather try and create stuff rather than consume content mm. at this time. Yeah, that's a good point. But, 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 even with the creating content, like I, I spoke to um, 
another uh, game developer, a friend of mine, and um, just ha how he's feeling right now. And he, his, his focus for game development is like shot. And, shot. and mm -hmm. mine is also like I've, I had, a, I had a night, I think one night I managed to get in where I got some um, relatively productive work in. But apart from that, I don't know. It's that whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? I think ma yeah. making games is not really... Cause I, cause not because because of the big, the big unknown aspect around this, we're still in this kind of like survival mode, still working out what we need, what's the... Um, trying to calculate the um, the eventual outcome of this and um, trying to make How some hypotheses. How long will you be in this? Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's, hard, and it's very hard to sort of escape into that. And also, like, right now, my wife and son are at home every day, all day. You know, my wife is working. Our son's not in daycare. He's too. It's really hard to concentrate on actually trying to code for long blocks of time. Because, you know, it's like you can, you program, you program, you get into a, a role. As soon as that's interrupted, you got to start that again and again. And my last week, I've just been so unproductive. I wanted to. I've, I've thought about these things, but I have not been able to translate them into decent code, right, and right. it's just been. Amazing. Yeah, and I, th I think that's part of the problem because right now we're kind of grabbing time where we can, and um, that doesn't really work so well. I mean, you have no choice sometimes; you have to make it work. Um, but you know, it's that concept of um, develop. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. Like manager time, cr creative time, developer time, and how yeah. de developers or uh, creatives or game developers like we are. We need long stretches of time um, to, because you got to, you know, sometimes it takes an hour to get into the groove, just to get mm. into a state of mind where you're uh, being productive. But at the same yeah, time, yeah, there's you, an interruption know. or, or if there's a meeting or something, bam, like you lose it, you have to start right, again. Right, right. But I, I suppose as an indie developer, you have to be a bit more flexible because you're not always going to get that time, and yeah, uh, sometimes you have to um, just get on get get on your computer for fifteen minutes to, to knock off one task. You know, add, add, add a stroke to one a character sprite sheet, or just tweak that one animation, just to tick that one thing off your list, and 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 then you can go to as long as there's some momentum every day, even if it's just thinking about what you want to do next. Sometimes that's enough because um, it's not always about tangible tasks that have to be done. Sometimes just thinking about something and resolving a, a challenge or problem partially, even in your head, that's already work. That's that's time. So. You know. Absolutely. And and that's something I read in Stephen King's autobiography, which you might have I think you might have read too. It's also a guide to writing. And he um basically says, uh, oh, the only way I can keep this going is I make sure no matter what, every day I write a thousand words. Mm -hmm. Um and, and George R. Martin's the same, except he says <laughs> every year I try to write a thousand words. You know? <laughs> I, I saw I saw George R. Martin and Stephen King in an interview once. They were on stage. <laughs> And um, Stephen King was uh, was saying exactly what you just said. How he uh, does a thousand whatever, uh, 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 how many pages a day, or I can't remember how they were calculating it. Um, and <laughs> George R. Martin just like looked at him, and he, like, what? But he said to him, I could see with the sincerity, it's like, how do you, how do you um, get that kind of focus happening? <laughs> so he's a genius, yeah. but he's obviously um, human, um, um, and he deals with his own distractions and stuff. Absolutely. And, 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 and you can really translate that to game development. I mean, like we, like I'm a pretty prolific game developer, I say, and I'm a really release a lot of content. Um, so I do your theory of, I always, every day I do something, do something, the quality of my content goes up and down. And I definitely release things that are not quite, you know, as ready as they could be and there's bugs and so on, but I make sure that I like always be shipping kind of thing. And that's my approach, but then you have other developers that like will take you know, longer and just get it right. And you, can, you can't say definitively which one is better, but it's what works for you. You just have to stay motivated however you can, you know what I mean? Because if you, you know, walk away from something for six months and then you go back to it, like, what am I doing here? That can be a, a momentum killer and so on. And in a time like this, it's very easy to go, you know, why am I making games? You know, mm. what's the point? But it's also, it could be a really good thing to kind of, you know, have that little hour or two right, of escapism right. every day. Well, yeah, and, and, and the other side of that is that this could actually be a very good opportunity for people to do get work on games. I mean, it's hard to know, right? But um, that's the other flip side is, and I've tried to encourage a few people to say, hey, take this time and do what you can because um, should this all blow over, you, you will have potentially had a, a, 
uh, a bit of time to, um, you know, like what I mean to say is some people have lost their jobs, obviously, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, are in um, a very different situation to us. Um, but this could be a good time to maybe uh, reskill in a, in a way. I mean, because a lot of people have been pursuing. All right, let me start again. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to stop being around. There's, there's a lot of aspiring indies out there, people who are trying to break into the field. Um, they have an interest in it, but they haven't really um, they haven't really pushed deep into it. They've been doing tutorials and stuff like that. They have other jobs, and they may have lost their job during this, this time. So this could be an opportunity to really um, get into that indie stuff and get to a point where um, you, you feel accomplished with it and you're confident. And then after this all blows over, you may even have a new career as a game developer um, um, where this opportunity with this time, you may have never got that. You may have been in a nine to five cycle for the next five years doing some kind of job that you don't particularly like, but you needed to pay the bills. Now you're being forced. You're being forced mm-hmm. to take time off. Um, the problem is if, if they're also being forced to not have money, that's, a, that's another issue because um, survival will always... Um, immediate survival will always take priority over some something like learning new skills you know but sure I mean, but there is a connection there the, the, there is a connection between learning those new skills and, and long-term survival you know because you need um they, they will inevitably end up paying you back you know quite literally financially so I don't and, know. and especially with game dev it is a relatively cheap hobby all you need is a computer um there's udemy courses that'll cost you 20 bucks and you get you know Right. hours and hours of video there's a million youtube tutorials you know your own channel's been awesome for young unity developers wanting to you know learn mm. techniques and so on so that your real you know uh cost is time and we have time at the moment everyone that's in lockdown has time so as you said any if you ever wanted to become a game developer and you'd been tinkering with it now's the time if you're not going to do it now like you know yeah yeah, never. <laughs> Otherwise, crawl up in a ball in the corner and just. Yeah, this is understandable too. Yeah. But you know, when you feel motivated, like you could look back at this time and go, "Yeah, that was the thing that really kind of kicked me off." One thing I would suggest is don't make any kind of um, coronavirus games. There's already <laughs> a, bit, there's a million already out there. It's like, not only bad taste, it's it's just not gonna. You're wasting your time. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Those novelty games. It's a waste of time. Yeah, it really is. Like, oh man, I can't stress that enough. I'm glad you said that. I mean, I wasn't really necessarily looking, hoping to get into this topic, but um, you know, it comes back to that. Um, you look, look, this this time in gen- in general, right now, there's a lot of people trying to get rich quick and trying to take. You know, all these people that just love a get rich quick opportunity, mm-hmm. but they never get, they never win. They're always chasing these no. opportunities, and they they have no resolve. You know, where they never commit to one thing long enough. Um, and it's in the same way. Like that's how I think of a lot of these, like um, people who enter the game dev space just to make some Flappy Birds clone or, or whatever. Oh, he got rich, I will too. Doesn't work like yeah. that. Doesn't work. No, this, this, the stats and probability is, is against you. You know. Yeah. By the time you start making your Flappy Birds game, it's too late. You've right. got to think of something else. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, Nuts. why don't you show us something from what are you working on at the moment? Yeah, so first of all, when we earlier in this video, I, I was telling you that I'd, um, I've launched Spartacus on iOS, but um, not happy with the controls and, and it hasn't had many reviews yet, but the reviews are, yeah, the controls suck. So what I'm doing is I want to show you this. So I'm going to fire up uh, Unity here and see if you can see this screen. Um, Cool. Yeah, I can so, see. How exciting. I've got your oh, yeah, Unity on screen. Level. So this, yeah, this, now, this, is, this is Oliver at the wheel, by the way. I'm, um, no yeah, hands, Mom. This, this is your average level. Um, so what it's using right now is, can you see this is your virtual D-pad? Right, yes. Um, and then you've got your buttons here. Uh, that's going to stay, but what I want to program it in, in I want to do it in such a way that any way you t- uh, tap on the left side of the screen, the D-pad will be there. Um, but what I wanted to show you is we run the game. I hadn't actually done Unity in about three months. I'd forgotten half of it, but here's our hero. You're going to find it's pretty choppy because it's running through like That's you're fun. recording it. Yeah, yeah. Looking it's, it's, it's still kind it. of interesting. I think most people are used to this kind of. Um... So what I've done is I've made acceleration is instant now right. and the jump I've made a lot more 
kind of it's more lenient so you, you can jump further and float in the air for longer which is not realistic but on a mobile you need as much sort of time in the air to be able to go jump there yeah. jump you know see how kind of <clears throat> so it, 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 it is getting a little bit choppy at the moment uh, okay. I'm not sure if it's because it's a relatively high frame rate game in terms of like the actions very fast or it probably is. Yeah. So I'll I'll stop sharing that in a second. But now it's it's, it's still but, interesting though. It still does have um, checkpoint. Quite a nice visual appeal. So, all right, stop share. But what I was yeah showing you in that video, which is probably more like a slideshow, is that uh, <laughs> in the in the Steam version of the game, and the crazy thing is like in my head. Spartacus controlled perfectly because I've just been with it for the last nine months and I know exactly how the jump works and how far you got to jump from platform right. to platform. And I've made all the levels like that. But for many other people, it's like, oh, he, he jumps too quickly or he's too slow or whatever. So it's really hard to kind of get back into your own head and kind of go, these people are right, I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and, and redo that. So what I've been doing is going, well, if I was just coming to, to this from the beginning, playing this on mobile, what would I want this to have? And so I've made the jump more floaty, which can be a negative in a PC version of it, but on a mobile version, you need more time to land. So mm. I've slowed down the gravity on his jump, and I'm, I want to see if that works or not, so we'll see. Yeah, man, um, give me a test play next time, and I'll, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, for but sure, you know, I'll send the, you a the Things with pl platformers are difficult, by the way. Cheers. Mm. <sighs> Let me go. You... you, you Monologue, I'm going to get a beer because you've inspired me. So oh, I'll be back in a sec. We'll wait for Ollie to get his beer. No, I'll just kick it back. I hope everyone's um, doing well, by the way, um, and staying safe during this particular uh, time. And I'll, it'll be nice to do some of these more conversations with you guys so you can guys can kind of feel that you're, you're engaging with us in this way. All right, here we go. Cheers hey. to the camera. Cheers, my friend. Ah, ding. Mm. That's good. It's funny after not having beers for a while, it's really you know it tastes so good. Like <laughs> something about quarantine beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quarantine beer, man. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be some new craft beer uh, label quarantine. for sure. I can just see it. COVID, COVID label. COVID, yeah. COVID. Yeah. yeah, nineteen batch or something. <laughs> yeah. So what I was gonna say with um, we, we were talking about um control feel and responsiveness you know and it's interesting right because you're always going to get this um discrepancy in what you make and what someone will like because i mean my own controls for for blood and mead are not are based intuitively i guess what on what i imagine 80s platformers were kind of somewhat based on which is not necessarily a good thing but that's kind of what i would the era that's i was the raised in. yeah right absolutely so i go by feel when i do a lot of these things and i even had some people like, oh that's flow to you but it's not it's it's quite often um things like animation will also affect uh how visually something floaty uh, uh how how something appears to be floaty or not because like if if you had a if you have an animation where the character kind of falls into it with a lot of weight, and you have one which is kind of um, resistant or even has a visual parachute, it's gonna just trick your eyes into thinking it's more floaty. It doesn't mean necessarily is right. It's, a, yeah. it's a, a, might a, be a moving at the same illusion. frame rate. Right, right. But uh, I mean, you can't, one... you can't please everyone, right? I mean, this is no. on the bottom line. Was there one particular game that you found uh, has been the biggest influence on Blood and Mead? Ooh, man. That's interesting, right? Because a lot of it is probably coming from my subconscious. Um, do you want me to pop open a bit of uh, the game? See if I can do a screen share. I might... I'd love to see it, yeah. So what I'll show you now, I'll just show you a bit of one of the early levels. I mean, I'll, one, um, this level's been probably getting a lot of... So that's my scene yeah. here. Uh, so this is like... Many layers of parallax. <laughs> right. It's one of the early levels. Hold on. Is this thing going to work or what? All right. So I might just go full screen. And what I'll do, because I'm at the point where this plays better with a controller than the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pop oh, that I should in. have gone full, full screen. Yeah, it would have been twice as choppy, but... 
Oh, yeah. But we'll see see if your line is choppy or not. But anyway, I've, I've turned the music off, by the way, um, just to keep it from... <laughs> So that's the new, um, the new combat system. Got a real Wonder Boy and Monster Man vibe from the uh, killing the snakes. Yeah, I'll just play a little bit. I'll show you this hidden passage here. Boiled in like a rat. And here you've got a, a wall that you can't pass. A sign there. A secret oh, passage cool. here. Got some issues on the, um, the, on the tiles in the background. Yeah, let's so have to fix that up. Yeah, it's probably just camera related. Yeah. Oi, what are you doing down here, Lily? <laughs> this place is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a bit, uh, maybe treachery in the air. What are you up to? <laughs> for me to know and for me to know. <laughs> <laughs> you go, how about you then? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So he's your first little mini boss. Uh, this, this is, uh, just uh, just first just the enemy. enemy. Oh, cool. camera's going crazy. Oh no. This doors open up. So you got a little cutscene um, box come down. Oh. All right. And I've got like a. Uh, So there's not much, um, yeah. Some old man in a in a in a cage. <laughs> That's not meant to say exclamation. exclamation. That's meant to be <laughs> like deadpan exclamation. Oh my goodness! I've got to fix it. That. That's uh, my what a niffle. So this is my custom dialogue system, by the way. So this is one of the mm -hmm. issues you have. Like, um, well, it's the strangest of things. A gorgeous redhead came to me in the night. So it's all. It's all messed up. I gotta, I gotta fix it up. But I'll, I'll stop. Yeah, but you know, it's a work in progress. Yeah, because I, I like I, it. I, I've roll, I've started rolling out the new dialogue for the game, and there's mm -hmm. some um, positioning issues. I'm still trying to, trying to work out. But anyway, it's got a cool vibe to it, though. It, um, it, it has that sort of kind of whimsical, not, not a super like. Last thing you want is yet another super serious platform game. Yeah, yeah. that seems to be like um, it's been pretty common late. So this is meant to be a bit of fun. I mean, in terms of the inspirations, um, a lot of inspirations, obviously, and a lot that I'm probably not even aware of. But in terms of just the thematic, um, Asterix and Oblix, the, um, mm -hmm. the the comics, the French comics was a big part of it. And even in this game, you have these potions that give you strength and stuff, just like... Um, yeah, and even the character has a similar, you know, Asterix has that sort of the, the helmet that sort of, you know, um, with the little wing things, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. Ha has a little inspiration. Yeah, and that was a bit tongue in tongue in cheek in general, and uh, even the even like things like uh, Metal Slug inspired this. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a excuse me, a very different theme, but just in terms of like how the enemies die, a bit of the gore, and you know, there's like it was quite exaggerated in um, in Metal Slug. And Quack Shot, and and obviously mm -hmm. Wonder Boy was a big one to begin with, and Wonder Boy three, and it kind of um, over time the inspirations kind of changed because the game started. It's weird because when I first started this game, it was like a particular thing, and then over time it became something else, and then over time it became something else. And well, when wasn't I one of the first sort of iterations of this game was like a almost an endless runner. Was that sort of yeah kind of how it that was almost just a trick to get the artist on board. <laughs> yeah, simple-minded fool. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a game done in a month. He's like, all right, and uh, four years later, we'll see. Hang on, still <laughs> several years later. Yeah. But it's 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 really. I mean, I've seen I've seen the development of this game from the beginning, and 
it's really cool to see how it's sort of coming along and I've seen other bits of this game and it's got a lot of depth to it and tons of systems and really interesting levels and enemy designs and traps and, uh, you know, complete sequences of towns and sieges and that kind of thing. So yeah, no, it's definitely got a lot. Um, but, you know, the question is how much how much is enough, right? And Because it's, it's, it's so yeah. weird, you know, like when, we, when you talk about um, uh, length of a game because, man, like... I don't know what what people expect from from um, indie developers sometimes, eh? Because you you'll get sometimes you'll get games that are eight hours long, an indie platformer, eight hours long. That's massive. Huge. You, Huge. I mean, Un- Uncharted Four was only like eight, eight hours long, right? And that's a AAA game, and people complained about that. Fine, mm. but that's um, what do you want? Like a movie is only two hours long, right? I, I mean, for, you might be paying more than a movie, but more often than not. The price you're paying for an indie game is probably on par with a cinema experience, which is. Uh, and what you, know, you don't want, you don't want games wasting your time. You don't want game developers adding in kind of constant backwards and forwards <clears> just <throat> make the game feel longer. You want a game that respects your time, you know. Like Assassin's Creed, you know, they, yeah, because they exactly. know people. Right. They know people want these kind of un, in, infinite hundred experiences. So you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, when I was making Spartacus, I I put in. 20 levels and then you basically go through like a hell version of it and at something like i think it's like ends up with about 44 levels or something and that took me nearly a year to make and so it really gave me this real newfound respect of how long it takes to make even the you know a, a fairly simple humble platform game and that game clocks in at about like you can probably speed run it in maybe two and a half three hours but it's probably more like four so like it even to make a game that long it just takes a long time well, right, yeah. I mean, and when do you call it, right? And there's different, mm, and there's yeah, different, like and, and there's different rules for different games. Where some 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 games will get a pass, and some games will get like, oh, this game is too short, you know. You know, my general rule for myself on that, which I only really came up with when I was working on Spartacus, is like, once I'd started using each kind of mechanic more than a couple of times. If I started making levels, it felt like, yeah, this feels like the same one from before. That's when it's kind of time to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> through every mechanic a couple of times and uh, like, you know, rather than 20 levels using the same mechanic. It's no point. Yeah. It, it's so funny, right? Because he, he, he consider this, like every Super Nintendo game, not every, but the majority of Super Nintendo platformers were, you, if, if, you look up, if you look up speed run videos on YouTube, or, or even long play, I mean, for that matter. They, they, yeah. they clock in about one hour and a half, like one hour, 30 yeah. minutes, one hour, 40 minutes. Over two hours are considered a long platform, but like mm. Aladdin, um, Mickey Mouse, Castle of Illusion. Um, yeah, Hercules. Um, uh, Lion King, Hercules. These games are, uh, you know, they max out at two hours. But they mm. were great games and nobody would ever consider saying that game's too short. You know, I mean, for very... But, you know, it's different because back then it was arguably harder to make games you know you needed um, to make a game like that you needed to have a studio now an indie developer by the in their mum's um, basement can uh, mm. with, with the right um, skills and, and, and creativity can, can assemble something that rivals any of the great um, studios from the from the 90s you know it's and one of the problems is that steam kind of threw a bit of a grenade in there when they said you know if you play it for two hours or less you get a refund so developers <laughs> want to make their games longer. Oh, God. So two that, hours. <laughs> two hours yeah, is the minimum? Hours. Two hours? Yeah. But, you so, know, like um, Thomas Brush has that platformer. Like, I think that was – I watched someone play that. I think Jack Septicite played that, and it was two hours for, like, a casual yeah. play. That might have kind of come in before that rule. But you know that it was around the time of Firewatch, which is sort of like that exploration game going through the forest and so on. Um, I've played a little bit of it. It's, it's not, you know, my kind of game really, but it's really well done. It's beautiful. Um, that game clocks in at about sort of two, two and a half hours or something. So a whole bunch of people were getting refunds after finishing the game and going, yeah, great game, getting a refund. And the developer's like, what the F? You know what I mean? This is yeah, that sucks, outrageous. That's obviously like people just exploiting it, right? It's just... Yeah. And Steam, no has, Steam has historically been very bad at stopping exploitation of, of game mm-hmm. developers. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the answer to that is. I almost kind of think like um, if you uh, buy the game uh, and you play it for 
10 minutes and it's like you get a percentage of the money back, you know what I mean? If you play it for two hours, you get 50% back. If you play it for three hours, you get 20% of your money back. So the longer you play it, the less money you get back. Mm. <laughs> There's got to be something. Well, you know, that's, yeah, it's something clever like that. But you can see games that have got like 400 hours on review, like, you know, they've been played for 400 hours and some go, Oh, thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually love that. Oh, I, I played it for 400, 400 hours, but it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and because the developer's done one small patch or something, it's like, oh, I don't like the fact that you nerf the, you know, the staff of Foozle and it only does plus two oh. damage now. I'm like, fix it. Kill your family. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes, you, yeah, game dev is not always, you know, rewarding. Yeah. You got to be intrinsically motivated sometimes because, or you need a thick skin because there's a lot of vicious people out there reviewing your games or yeah, not thick, reviewing them at thick all. Thick skin is um is important because it's weird, right? Like you put a game out there and people can say whatever the fuck they want about it, basically. Yeah. And they can call and, you, you know, an asshole. You, customers are always bright. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. So hey, what's next for you? Working on more Blood and Mead? Uh, yeah, look, so I've, I've moved into this kind of uh, dialogue uh, system kind of working on the story because I've got you know hundreds of game mechanics like I would say literally hundreds of wait hold on <laughs> coronavirus oh, oh excuse very, me yeah, it's a good kind of like uh, put some disinfectant on that immediately <laughs> god damn it man the price of disinfectant has shot through the roof ah uh, yeah probably too man this um, Glen 20 that you might know I bought yep. three bottles for $90. Three it's bottles like for $90. This shit is normally like $7 each. Anything antibacterial. But I had, I had no choice, right? Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Well, if you need it, you need it. Like it's, it's that, and it's that, that reality that p things are worth, only worth what people will pay for it. What people will pay for them. And, yeah. And they've stopped using cash real, um, largely in my um, neighborhood and city. There's like signs everywhere ah. saying, you know, no cash. Which is interesting, you know. Cash, cash might be obsolete after all this. Uh, when, when yeah, this, maybe there'll be some good that'll come out of it. You know, yeah. maybe they'll not, not straight away, more. but it'll. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, not to not to go too far on this topic, but at the same time, you know, it's like you wonder what other long term. I mean, it's hard to talk about this because we don't know where it's going. This is the thing, yeah. and it's 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 any number of different scenarios, but. One way or another, it's going to d dramatically change people. I mean, one thing is sure, it's not going to wipe us out. Um, but it's, it's, as a lot of people have said, it's a dress rehearsal for next time. You know, mm. this could have been Ebola or, or something mm. uh, just as, sure. you know, um, devastating. A hemorrhagic high mortality disease, rate, man, yeah. where, where you die in your own feces, you know, and blood. This is like... We, we kind of got lucky in a, in a sense. This could have been a hell of a lot worse, man. And th these I, are the kind of things I, look, I try think. to think positively about it because, God damn, man. The you have to think out, out of this, there will be there will be much more. You know, you won't have a a, a president that kills the, you know, the response team two years ago because it's like, oh, we'll just hire them again when it comes time. You know, if we'd had a, a CDC, they wouldn't have had, you know, the disastrous results they've had in America, which is now the the number one importer of, um, you know, the coronavirus. So like it, you have to think if there's any, there will be positives weirdly enough to say that we'll come out of this. And that are things like uh, a lot more people will um, be more comfortable with sort of working from home. We might get less commuting on the roads. We might get uh, new ways of doing things, new values for yeah, things man. as far as like, absolutely, you know, um, but also one of the number one positives I, I think will be like, being able to know what you're supposed to do in a pandemic because we really didn't don't. This is the critical thing, and this is why the, the the Asian countries were so quick. You know, d day one they had their masks on. You know, and we we like, like you might have seen in, in in Bondi Beach and these eastern suburbs. And right now, this is the epicenter of our um, Australian uh, the virus. You know, and I, I drive I drove through there, and people were just like you wouldn't even know you wouldn't even know there was something going on. And I, if people saw yeah. it from a different parts of the world, they would have been like, what the hell are you guys thinking? But that's Australians, man. L laid yeah, back, and, laid and, back and till the end. And, yeah, fucking and, and I guess we've right. all been there. We should be right, mate. And we've all been, you know, young and immortal 
wants, you know, where you kind of feel like, yeah, I'm indestructible and so on. But the, the message has to get through that, like, it's not just you. It's like you, you, you might be completely asymptomatic, but then you're spreading it here, 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 and here. Right. It's kind of like bouncing it around. Yeah, man. It's scary. Yeah, Never been through nice. anything like this. So big wake up call, yeah. man. Big wake up call. Mm. And uh, new business models are bound to emerge from this situation. New ways of uh, making money and doing business. Um, slowly, I mean, we're fortunate slowly right now. Gonna, um, be digitalized maybe not straight away but you know they they but you know what I, what I was I was thinking about this a little bit and just even things like what are the I mean look hum, the human species has the remarkable ability to forget you know <laughs> we we are able to forget and then shit happens to us over and over again this is like is uh, historically this has always been a a thing right yeah. complacent World War 1 the war to end all wars right right, right. But you give it ten years, later, twenty what? years, thirty years before you know it, we kind of back into the same habits we were in. All those generations have died off. New generations mm -hmm. are in, and uh, it, it falls out of living memory. And you know, you, you can just imagine how many things happened in the ancient world that are no longer documented because the Library of Alexandria was burnt, and how many pandemics we may have had, how many things. Mm -hmm. And th and this is what these like biblical stories and stuff are likely based on. All these, um, um, you know. And these events that plagues. happened and, you know, they talk about all these, um, you know. Well, you know, there's locusts going through Africa right now. There's massive plagues of locusts. So it's basically if you were um, sort of, you know, more spiritually inclined, you might be thinking this is the, uh, you know, the plagues, the pestilence. We've had the fires. We had floods. You know, this yeah, right. is all like and, revelations. And, and, you, and, you, and, you define, and you define something in your society or life to attribute it to, right? Because mm, humans are always yeah. up to no good. We're always running yeah, some kind of mischievous, <laughs> punishing us. <laughs> right. So there's 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 never a moment in our in our like um, historical time period where we can't find a reason for the the shit that's happening. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's, let's see, see, man. Like you know, but at the same mm. time, I'm very thankful to be in the digital space that I, I made the decision um, f 15 years ago to pursue this way of life the digital game developer way of life. And, you know, and it's taken me, it's very interesting, right? Like, uh, much like you, you probably started a bit before me. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, but but I'm not sure how, how far, I think I started actually, well, you know, when did you start, you know? Like, uh, arguably we started when we were children because a lot of us were making oh. um, games on paper and, um, you know, I was, yeah. In the, in, the, in the 80s. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and, I, and I was telling <laughs> you a story, crazy. um, just a few weeks ago, how about the first game I um, made on computer when I was eight years old? This kind of stuff, yeah. Program that, yeah. You know, look typing at that. in this cool, stuff. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you're eight, eight years old. Well, yeah, you know, but it was um, it was done in a very unorthodox um, way because we we didn't understand how to make games, so we just did things intuitively, and sometimes we we made something interesting, sometimes not. But but now you have regimented. Um, Training systems to best, get you to these practices, outcomes, right? And, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm well, glad. We've been doing it as long yeah. as we basically could, you know, since we were very young. But professionally, not as long, but still quite a long time, really. Right. And and then ten years into our career or whatever, Unity came along, and people were doing within one a week things that took uh, us years to accomplish. <laughs> and I, and I was a Unity holdout for many years. Like I only really released my first decent Dude. game in Unity. Yeah, like you know things like uh, 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 people. Uh, I take it for granted, you know, things like um, when they play with Unity or Godot or Game Maker or, or anything, even the new Unreal Kit, you know, things like collisions are handed, handled for you. There was a time where I had to uh, largely program my own collision code, checking the X position versus the, um, the Y vector and then checking if it's within this space and if it is, flag a hit. Now you just put a oh. box collider or whatever and say on trigger or on collision. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, you know. <laughs> I'm still having to do that now because I'm remaking one of my old games in, in Adobe Air and using basically, you know, graphics, graphically enhanced version of right. Flash. <laughs> and I'm still having to do all that. Literally yesterday I had to do, you know, AABB collision sort of stuff. And right, right, yeah. Piping yeah. out. And it's a, just crap. It's really like backwards way of doing it, but like, you know, it's old code that needs to be poured into this. And the very last styling game I'll ever make. So, but yeah, it's but. interesting. It was um, 
it's easy to lose all your time working out these fiddly things. And, and this is why, back to what I was saying about the games from the 80s, how they got a bit of a pass for being so short. Because they had to do everything we're talking about now times 10. You know, they mm. were dealing with probably even lower, maybe not times 10, just like I'm just throwing random numbers out there. But they, um, well, I don't know how far you took it, but a lot of them were writing pretty um, low-level stuff that, well, or not, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not completely familiar with all the different tools and techniques that were used at the time. Uh, they're wizards. Um, they're so much further advanced than my ever kind yeah, of got. So much, so much um, trickery and stuff that had to be done to make things work. It's now it's tiny, just, tiny, tiny, like you're getting a whole game and like Super Mario Brothers is what, like 32K well, or the, something? The, the memory was the issue. They had to yeah, find out magical ways to, or what, that's when mm. I say trickery, to find out clever ways to reduce the memory footprint to fit a whole game into like, what did you say? 32 kilobytes? Yeah, something. something like that. It's tiny. Oh, it's tiny. Me. Much smaller even. It's ridiculous. Like one JPEG now is way bigger than, you know, most of the games back then. And I, that Prince of Persia video I sent you the other day, um, the guy had to work out like, oh, I can't actually get enemies in my game because I ran out of memory. So what he did was he kind of worked out a way of flipping the um, bitwise kind of coordinates of his character to make it kind of appear inverted and then he got an enemy by using like you know crazy maths and that kind of thing so yeah, they're yes, the real it's impressive right john carmack and and, and mm. all those well yeah i mean john carmack was one of the first guys who got parallax scrolling on a pc you know with commander keen and stuff like that and those guys you know the story but um probably maybe some of the audience might not one weekend uh carmack and romero like they sat down and they got a videotape of Super Mario Brothers. Like they played it and videotaped it and they made a whole version of Super Mario Brothers level one on a PC in just a weekend. This is back before like you could do any of that stuff and they had a full parallel scrolling, had all the sound effects. They sent it to Nintendo and said, hey, do you want to have Super Mario Brothers on a PC, which is a massive market, it's way bigger than Nintendo. And Nintendo said, yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. No. Um, kill it, kill it, kill it. No. no. <laughs> only, only a Nintendo. Yeah, you know, and and they were amazed by it, but they said this ain't happening. But if that's I'm the kind of like tech. One moment. If I'm gonna be that dream. voice, can you do it right? Hey, only. Uh -huh. What's that? Ah, it's amazing. <laughs> the... Sweet sword. This is the sword from um, the last uh, samurai. Oh, uh, really? From the movie. This is the, yeah, it's a great movie. The one that Tom Cruise was wielding. Just a, That's a cool movie. A lot cheaper <laughs> and, a, <laughs> and a lot more, um, yeah, a lot easier to break. Yeah, it's a wicked sword. Um, but yeah, we, we've come a long way. And like, I guess we sort of, we got round to this topic by saying um, we're in a pretty secure position in employment wise because we're in the sort of tech industry. But then what happens in four or five years if there's like an EMP blast that wipes out all mm. computer technology? We have no skills of like right. can go and See, dig in the mines. Yeah, man. Very good point. Yeah. So it's, it's gone one particular way, but you know, it should Yeah, you know, we've locked out this but, time. Yeah, but. yeah, absolutely. But we're vulnerable in different ways, right? Like EMP blast, mm. solar flare, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, and these things can absolutely can and probably just based on probability, probably will. At some point, because just like this, man, if you told me last year that this is a situation I'd be in, that I would walk down my street, a street that is like largely just in a um, utopian bubble of, you know, food coming to my door and delivery drivers and just everything is pristine. If you told me that this would be disrupted in, in the way that has happened now, I wouldn't. Well, I mean, you could probably convince me, but I would say it's statistically I unlikely. <laughs> I mean, but then again, yeah. I'm always a bit of a, a I'm, I'm a glass half full at the best of times. <laughs> but but even if you like, you're saying you know you can't give your mum a hug because like I don't want to you know endanger you, and it's like what what this what science fiction are we living through? Right, but we like are it, living yeah. through it right now. No joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Um, so were you playing anything at the moment? You got any games? I, well, I, well, I actually I did take a when I was getting completely sort of, um, you know, actually it was a little bit before this all went really bad, but I, 
I got Pathfinder Kingmaker, which is like a uh, we played we both played Divinity. Um, it's a little bit more Dungeons and Dragons than that, and actually uses the Dungeons and Dragons rules. But I went through about a couple of hours in that. Um, it's really cool, really good fun. Um, probably a little too in depth for me as far as Pathfinder. So many stats and things. Yeah. Uh huh. It's, it's very cool, but it does demand you learn things about it. But I kind of so far I like it more than Divinity, just because I like the world more mm. mechanically, very similar, but. The world of this has a really cool, like it's almost like a pen and paper D and D game that you're kind of like going through with the dungeon master and going around this cool overworld map and things. Sure. Um, and you've, all, and you've also got Boulder's Gate coming out, right? Which is like kind of in line with with those ones again. So this will be like a third of that um, genre. Boulder's Gate, yeah, made by the same Larian Studios who did uh, Divinity Two. Um, I played a little bit of Bad North, which I told you about. Oh, um, right. Yeah, beautiful game. Yeah, really sweet, really nicely designed, um, very casual game. You can kind of like uh, you know, click here, troops. It's all about defending an island from sort of Vikings. Uh, you'd like it, I think. Um, it's a game that would probably be quite fun on Switch or something to sit mm. on your couch and play. Is is um, that the game that we saw on like Twitter like four a year, four or five years ago, yeah. we go, hey, look at this like prototype. Isn't this novel? Yeah. Like it was it's just it was just the corner of the island and it had mm. the um the mobs just um uh, yeah. flocking using uh, fl uh, AI flocking behaviors around the island. That's right. And I was like, whoa, this is really cool. And now they've actually released it. You know what bothers me, man? Can I just say one thing that really well bothers me about me <laughs> uh. <laughs> is that when I started making my game, uh, Blood and Mead, some years ago, there were a lot of other games at that time that were in development, and I was watching them on Twitter. A lot of those games are now complete, and I've watched them ship, and I'm like, fuck. I'm not I there. Want, I want to ship. I want to ship. I want to, I want to ship this motherfucker. But to be fair to you, is like what you're competing with is a lot of time they're full-time studios. You have a full-time job. You have... A family hmm. you know got a kid that it's much harder to do this when you're not doing it 40 hours a week yeah it's absolutely. way harder and so yeah. you know i remind it, i do it, remind myself of this i say well at the same time um, <laughs> on a good week i'm getting two days in i mean there, it, yeah. it, it was different like there were times where i had more time and every now and then during the year i'll take like some annual leave from my work to just get like a solid week in and during that week mm -hmm. i'll just push it man i'll be working 16 hour days just to just to, and and you know I'll, I'll maybe i'll maybe move this thing like three months into in, in in a week or two you know just by sheer brute force and just a lot of beer at night <laughs> yeah you really appreciate that time as well you go like i really got to use this and you slam it out it, well you know um, it, you know it messes you up though but at the same time there, there's a, there's yeah, a trade off, you know. It's not it's not for free. You can't put in sixteen hours a day for, for a, for a week without some kind of. You know. We've talked about this. I think we're in an, under no illusions of you know that we can do this forever. It would be nice to be able because we both love making games, but you know we basically kind of have to do this now, or basically don't bother because it's not going to get any easier. We're not getting any younger, you know. So you might as well just. This is your shot. You know what I mean? If not, it doesn't have to be this game, but like you can make all the excuses in the world as for why, you know, you know, why I can't be done, but like you're as young as you're ever going to be, you know, <laughs> this is the time to do it. Because I'm no doubt there'll be a time when we're like, man, I'm kind of done with game day. You know, it might happen. You can, you never know. It, it is an exhausting pastime, especially with a young family. It's crazy, man. Mm. It's really. Yeah, it's true. You know, um, I, I've thought about that before, and I, I see this online sometimes. I see other game developers talk about this, about the idea of like, oh, I don't know how long I want to do this for. It's it's weird because I, I find it with with game dev and indie dev specifically. Um, I mean, I, I guess we're talking about indie dev here, right? Because if you're working for a, mm. uh, a studio like a triple A or double A kind of game studio, um, it's a different thing again um, because you don't you're getting you're getting well, hopefully you're getting direct um, a financial incentive where as an indie developer, you're not getting paid until you actually pr produce yeah. the game so that you get, you're in this whole roller coaster ride the whole way. 
and if you look at that anxiety and you know people mm. complain about depression and stuff Ooh, i mean i understand it you know like well right because you can you can spend four years on a game if not more and make a hundred bucks <laughs> or you can yeah. make a million bucks you know that's how it is i mean this is a that's a strange um this, this strange kind of um i mean i wouldn't call it a gamble but just for the for, for the lack of it a better term is, you isn't know? it I, like, I call it like build your own lottery ticket. You know what I mean? You gotta, you <laughs> build build your own. Well, that's excellent. That's <laughs> Oliver. I mean, build I think, your own lottery ticket, Joyce. That's, yeah. I mean, I think you and I will always probably do this, whether we do it like um, with the intent of being commercially successful. Right. That remains to be seen. We might kind of just burn out on that and just go, you know what I mean? I'm going to just relax. I have a full-time job. I'm going to make games when I want that might just be the case in the years to come. But while we have the fire now, I think it's kind of, it's good to, you know, use that to fuel you. And, you know, that's what's keeping you up late at night, making these games and so on is that you you want success, you want some financial freedom, you have the creative spark and everything. And, you know, you gotta go with that. The odds are against us, but, you know, you got some skills, you might not, why not? But, you know, it's that whole, if not that, if not that, then what else? Mm, yeah. Because you know you have to, you have to. In life, you have to strive to fulfill your your passion or your your true sense of self or what you really feel is your calling. And if and if you don't, then you're shortchanging yourself, right? If you live a whole life, seventy years, in some line of work. That you have no interest in, and whatever it might be, you know, people get stuck into all weird jobs that they get stuck in, then they can't leave because they need the financial security, and then it's too hard for them. They get complacent, they haven't got the skills to transition over to the things they actually want to do, and then they're just screwed, man. And then they die, and then they're unhappy. Well, they they're unhappy, and then they die. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, look, no. you know, just to, to have a. Um, just, to, just right. to get I mean, real about it, you know, because at, at the end of the day, people need to understand that this is one life you have and you need to live it the way you want to live it. Yeah. Otherwise, and I guess if you, you ask doing? yourself, if you ask yourself, you know, one question, do you feel lucky? Um, if you ask yourself, would you be doing this if you weren't getting paid? And if your answer is yes, then you're in the right line of work. If your answer is, oh, well, no, mm-hmm. then, you know, like you said, life is too short for that. You know? Yeah. It's like an artist, right? Like, um, well, you know, because I mean, games are a, a type of art form, you know, absolutely. Because you know, there's there's been this long debate if games are art. You know, this is uh, the especially in the in the snobby art circles. But no, and they have a, they have a whole uh, categorization of what is art. I mean, art only must be falling into the category of thus, which is. Um, but the the problem is, well, it's not a problem. I think it's um, art should be more easily defined in something that emerges from one's creativity, right? I mean, but then, you, you know, some, some asshole will tell you that accounting is based on someone's creativity, creativity yeah. with numbers, you know? I mean, look, you know, creativity has its, has its, has its uh, tentacles running through all facets of, of human existence, no doubt. You know, you can get creative with a cup of coffee, creative with a mm-hmm. sandwich. So, you know, where does the art stop and where does the art start? Maybe oh, I mean, it's all think- art. Maybe it's all art. Maybe me taking out the trash, chucking it on the floor, which rivals a lot of art gallery kind of installations these days, <laughs> postmodernism. Maybe, maybe it's all art, man. Maybe that's all it I is. Think, I think the, the, the games, are they art or not? I think that ship's long sailed. I think games absolutely are art. And I've seen some games that have, you know, moved me in, in the same way that a movie was like Red Dead Redemption 2 is the most cinematic thing I've, you know, one right. of the most cinematic things I've experienced in a book game movie whatever right right um and 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 the rage you feel when you die in you know a really hard game that that, that that's an emotion that you don't get necessary from a movie so you know games absolutely are art and if, and if you don't think so you're not playing the right game <laughs> that's a good point man <laughs> well you know that might be a reasonable place to to leave it too yeah we're coming up about an hour yeah that's a, that's well, a good do, good, yeah. good conclusion just you know um very poetic yeah <laughs> so yeah man That's hey it. like it's been it's been um uh, great to do this with you and um mm. you know it'll be cool to do this more regularly because I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it i've got a chance to have, have a beer with a mate yeah um, yeah which man. i wasn't um Good. i didn't i didn't think i'd 
you know, to be honest, I'm going a bit stir crazy in here. Um, I haven't been able to um, take off too far. And everywhere I go is just like people kind of still swarming around. And I'm like, whoa, get away from me. You know what I mean? I can't. And um, I don't know. I'm thinking of actually um, taking off sometime soon. I've, I bought a special plug for my uh, work laptop to allow me to Sweet. successfully charge it um, in the car. So I'm even, I'm thinking of hitting the road, man. But um, look, I mean, it, it's so important, even in times like this, there are places you can go where you can be in isolation and so on. Even yesterday, I went just on a bushwalk in the Australian bush, you know, we've been on this hike together and um, it's not that popular. Uh, there was a few people out yesterday, but just being able to get away for a few hours and just, you know, clear your head, it's so important. Mm. Or in your case, you're a few days or whatever, it's just, and if you can do it, you should, because mental health is very important in a time like this. So man, we'll it, do this uh, again for sure, man. We'll, yeah, man. Uh, I've, we'll I've really enjoyed it. And um, let's let's schedule one in for um, for next week if the world is still here, or maybe even sooner, yeah. depending on how we go. All for right. sure. All right, All man. man. Good to chat. See you, dude. See you, mate.